If you're ready now, the starting lineups tonight for the New York Mets, leading off and playing second base, will be Lenny Randall. Batting second and playing at third, Jerry Grody. John Milner will be in left field, batting third. Hitting fourth, the right fielder, Dave Kingman. Ed Cranepool will play first base and bat fifth. Hitting number six in center field, the rookie, Lee Mazzilli. Batting seventh and catching, Ron Hodges. Hitting eighth, the shortstop, Bud Harrelson. While batting ninth, the pitcher, right-hander Tom Seaver. Again for New York, it's Randall at second, Grody at third base, and Milner in left field. Kingman in right. Greenpool at first base, Mazzilli in center. With Hodges catching, Harrelson at shortstop, and Seaver on the mound. As we look to the Reds' batting order and look what is out on the field right now, we note that there has been a last-moment change. Joe Morgan had originally been penciled in, of course, to play second base and bat third, as he normally does, but Doug Flynn is out at second base tonight, taking warm-ups from first baseman Danny Dreesen. So quite obviously, we're going to have a change at that spot that will no doubt bring about a, a quite a radical change in terms of who will be batting where. So we're in the process of checking that out right now, and as soon as we find out how the new batting order will go for Cincinnati, we'll be passing that along. But you can bet that Pete Rose will lead off, Ken Griffey will bat second, and after that, well, we're in the process right now of checking as Joe Nuxall talks down to the Reds' dugout with manager Sparky Anderson to see how they will be lining up. Gary Nolan ready to go as he's finished his warm-ups to Johnny Bench, and as we mentioned, it'll be Lenny Randall, the young man who will be leading things off for the New York Mets. He was in spring training with the Texas Rangers ball club, as you probably know, was involved in an altercation with Rangers manager Frank Lucchese, and ultimately was sent along to this New York ball club and has really been performing very, very well. Randall is batting 420 with two home runs and four RBIs. Felix Mian, normally the New York second baseman, but this guy has gotten a chance to play and has done so well that right now he is considered to be the main man at second base for this Mets club. Nolan into the windup. The pitch to Randall taken high and away for a ball, and this game is underway. The Reds an off day yesterday as far as National League play is concerned. They face the Tigers here in the Kid Glove charity game, losing to Detroit 4-1. to one. Pitch is over for a taken strike. Left-handed batting Lenny Randall with a count of one ball and one strike with Jerry Grody on deck and John Milner waiting in the wings. Nolan, in two starts encompassing 12 innings, has given up only seven hits and two runs. Randall swinging at the change and did not get it as he falls behind at a ball and two strikes. Two wins for Gary, one over the... St. Louis Cardinals a week ago Tuesday night in his last outing. He... Defeated the San Francisco Giants. He's ahead in pitching to Randall, and the pitch is cut out and chopped foul at home plate. The Reds defeating the Pittsburgh Pirates Wednesday afternoon in our second businessmen special of the year. That final score was 8-3, to three, so Cincinnati coming into this game with a record of 15 wins and 19 losses and trailed the Dodgers by 11.5. L.A. losing last night, blowing an early 5-1 lead and falling in 10 to the Pittsburgh Pirates, 6-5. to five. While the Mets are 14-20 and 20 in their 10 games out in the Eastern Division. Randall, a swing and a miss. Downey Bench drops the ball, but quickly pounces on it to apply the tag to Randall. A strikeout for Nolan to the first man he faces, and he'll be going to work now on Jerry Grody. Defensively for Cincinnati, it's Dreesen at first, Flynn at second, because short rows at third. The outfield has... Foster in left, Geronimo in center, and Griffey in right with Bench behind the plate. So one down on the strikeout of Lenny Randall, and here's Grody. Jerry batting 239 with four RBIs. He's a right-handed batter against a right-hander Nolan and takes a strike on the outside corner. Grody had no intention at all of playing in 1977. He came to spring training to help out with the Mets catching core. Breaking ball low to him, one and one, and of course got the bug again, was induced into signing another contract, and here he is back for another year. Got even to him, a ball on the strike with one out, the pitch on the way to the plate, cut on and rammed back up the middle, a base and into center field for Jerry Grody. So following the strikeout of Randall, a base hit to center by Grody, it brings up left-handed batting John Milner. 
Milner normally uh, or came up as a first baseman for the match has played considerably in the outfield where he is in this series opener playing left. He bluffs a butt and the pitch is over at the knees for a taken strike. Marty, uh, there's no particular reason that we know that Joe's out of the lineup. Uh, Spark didn't really say. Uh, Flynn will be hitting eighth in the lineup. This will just move it up. One, Dreesen to third, the whole lineup. Well, it sounds a little bit mysterious if there's no concrete reason for Joe Morgan being out of the lineup. Very, very unusual. Here's a pitch to Milner. Cut on. High fly ball. Hit back into right center. Geronimo is there in time to make the catch. And Grody, who goes halfway to second, comes on back to the first base back. Two outs. So the Reds lineup will have Rose leading off playing third, Griffey at second. Or Griffey batting second, playing right field. Dreesen will hit third at first base. Foster will be in left field, batting fourth. Johnny Bench will hit fifth and do the catching. Cesar Geronimo will be batting in the number six position, playing center field. Concepcion at short, batting seventh. Flynn will be at second base hitting eighth and Nolan batting ninth and pitching. Here is Dave Kingman now with two outs as he takes a slow breaking ball inside. Brody at first with two men out. Kingman batting 238 with eight home runs and 24 runs batted in. The pitch on the way, taking a strike. The Reds have defensively an overshift against Kingman with Flynn, Concepcion, and Rose all on the left side of the infield. Davey really pulled into the hole and deep at shortstop and rose deep at third and maybe three, four steps off the line. 1-1 pitch to Kingman. That's taken down low as the count goes to two balls and one strike. Randall struck out. Grody single to center. Milner has hit a fly ball to Geronimo on a two-ball, one-strike count. Gary Nolan against Dave Kingman. Johnny Bench hanging aside as Nolan comes set, kicks and throws. Kingman swings, line drive by Concepcion into left field. Davey tried to short hop the ball. He was playing pretty well as far as placement was concerned for Kingman, but Dave really hung out a frozen rope. Davey tried to backhand the ball off the hard hop, but it kicked by and went to left field with Brody moving to second. The Mets have two on with two down for Ed Greenpool. Marty, that ball had that top spin on it. He hit on top of the ball, and when it hit the turf in front of Dave, it just jumped. And <laughs> Dave just, well, uh, I don't blame him. I wouldn't really get in front of it either. I, I came up with it. I'd feel lucky, but uh, in this case, not so. Green pulled the batter with two men on and two men on. He looks at a strike. Ed doing his usual good job for the Mets. He's hitting over 300. At 3.08, he's clubbed three home runs and has driven in nine. Brody leading at second. Kingman off the back at first. The 0-1. Cranepool checking his swing on a breaking ball high. The Mets is a team, and it's really not hard to figure out where their problems are. And it seems to be a perennial problem for this club. Blessed with fine pitching, but very weak offensively. The team as a whole hitting only 2.35. 1-1 to Cranepool. Cut on and miss. They have had trouble scoring runs. And that, more than anything else, is the reason why they are as they are so far in 1977. But they're trying to stir something up here in the first inning against Nolan and the Reds. Gary a strike away from ending the New York threat as he deals. Cranepool line drives one into right field. That's a base hit. That's going to get Grody in from second. Kingman coming on to third. And on the throwback into Flynn, a run-producing base hit to right field by Ed Cranepool. And the New York Mets get on the board and lead it 1-0. Three well-hit balls here in the first inning off Gary Nolan. That single by Cranepool scores Grody, moving Kingman on to third base and keeps the inning going for rookie center fielder Lee Mazzilli. This young man jumped completely over triple-A baseball. He played at Jackson last year on the double-A level, batting 292 for that Texas League ball club. I'm talking to Joe Frazier about him before the game, he's doing what they expected him to do defensively. Pitch to him, taken high a ball, and pretty much what they expected him to do offensively. They felt that it would maybe be a year or so before Lee Mazzilli would be comfortable against major league pitching. Hitting only 236. 
Here's a throw to third, but not in time to get Kingman coming back as Nolan falls behind two balls and no strike. We received glowing reports on this youngster on his defensive ability in spring training, and Joe Frazier was telling us he has done that job for him in center field. Ball three. Leah Switch hitter batting left-handed, 6'1", 180-pounder. Only 22 years old. He's from Brooklyn, New York. And a 3-0 pitch to Mazzilli is ball four high, and Nolan having first-inning problems as that walk. Fills the bases with Mets and sets the table for catcher Ron Hodges. The Mets have reached Gary for three singles. And now the two-odd walk to Mazzilli fills him up. Hodges, the catcher, batting 294. With no home runs and an RBI, he has seen limited playing time this season. Having been to the plate for 17 times, has had five hits and one of them for extra bases, not a double. So Gary finding the New York Met third out very, very elusive as he will work from the stretch against Hodges and gets it over for a strike. Paul Pryor, our plate umpire tonight. Andy Olson at first base, Jerry Crawford at second, and Doug Harvey, the umpire at third. Hodges checking, that cost him. He's behind at nothing in two. The Mets have scored here in the first, and they have Kingman at third. Greenpool, who drove in the run with a base hit to right, he's on at second. And Lee Mazzilli is the base runner leading at first. He's away from the plate, steps back in. Looking at a straightaway Cincinnati outfield, Nolan looking to bench for the sign, gets it and pitches. And this one chops slowly and foul along the first base side. Indianapolis has Tommy Hume on the mound tonight. They're playing home against Omaha and leading 5-1 to one at the end of four innings. Indianapolis getting three runs across in the first. Holding count of two strikes on Hodges on deck is the man hitting eighth in the Mets lineup, shortstop Buddy Harrelson. The pitch on the way. Cut on and miss. Hodges a strikeout with the bases loaded and the side retired. But New York gets a run on a cup, three hits. No errors with three men left on. And after a half inning of baseball in Cincinnati, it's the Mets one and the Reds are coming to bat. Well, after a half inning of play here, we trail the New York Mets one to nothing as we come up against the right-hand receiver for the first time tonight. Tom, all business out there on that mound, whether it be in Cincinnati, L.A., Philadelphia, Chicago, New York. He's after his fifth victory, 4-2 the record, 285 the ERA as he makes his ninth start. He has three complete games. But as you probably know, historically, the Cincinnati Reds have been very, very unkind over the years to Tom Seaver. He'll be facing Pete Rose to lead things off. As Seaver, with that classic form of his, sends in the fastball that stays inside for ball one. Seaver, lifetime, has won 10 and lost 17 against the Reds and was 1-1 against us last season. Rose takes the next pitch, an off-speed delivery from Seaver for a ball, 2-0. Pete hitting at 3 333 with a home run, 16 RBIs. Seaver yet to throw a strike as he kicks and fires. Rose swings, foul, out of play, off to the left. Two and one. Reds, in fact, the only team that Seaver has a less than 500 record against lifetime. In his two starts last year, he got his 5-3 on May 4th at Shea in New York and lost to Santo Alcala in the Reds 2 to nothing May 15th here at Riverfront. Rose swings again on another foul out of here. Count even to 2-2. Ken Griffey on deck. And he'll be followed by first baseman Danny Dreesen. Got a good crowd on a beautiful night for baseball here in Cincinnati. And apparently the extended weather forecast is for much of the same over the weekend. Swing, fly ball, shallow left. Milner coming in hard. Still on the run and he cannot handle it. He had it and dropped it. Harrelson picks it up in shallow left. He can't find the handle and he goes to second. Well, both Milner and Harrelson... Handle that base, 
handle that baseball like it had nails in it. Tell you that, uh, I was just going to say that a double arrow for sure will be charged. And not too often will you see that on one fly ball, but uh, Milner and Harrelson both get charged with an arrow, and I. That's another strange one for the year. Hey, it certainly is. The odds against seeing that happen have to be astronomical. Milner tried to basket catch it at the bell, dropped it. Harrelson picked it up and dropped it, allowing Rose to go to second. Griffey takes the breaking pitch for a strike. So two errors charged on the fly ball hit the left by Rose. One on Milner, one on Harrelson. Pete is at second. He's a tying run, and Griffey is waiting on Seaver's one strike pitch. That's over on the inside corner. Strike two. Kenny batting 314. Has Homer twice, has knocked in 13 runs. He hit New York pitching last season at a 371 clip. Out of the batter's box, a Reds right fielder, but now climbs back in as Rose checks the whereabouts of Harrelson on his shortstop. Here's a pitch. That's high and away off the glove of Hodges. And Rose will come on to third. Charge Tom Seaver with a wild pitch. Hodges completely handcuffed on that up and away. It looked like a sailing fastball that really took off on Hodges. And he had no chance at all of keeping that ball from getting away. He's out there now just to the third base side of the plate talking with Seaver. About as strange a way as you can go from home to third, I guess, is there is. Well, the only thing that would top it off now would be a pass ball that would allow Pete to score. <laughs> Griffey behind, a ball, two strikes, and that infield coming up a couple of paces now. As Sieber will go from the windup now that Rose has advanced on his own wild pitch, and with Sieber taking too much time, picking up Hodges' sign, Griffey steps out. Pitcher and batter is set to go. The one-two delivery. Inside with a fastball at the letters as Griffey back cuddles away from the plate. Two and two. Cranepool, Randall, Harrelson, and Grody. That's the New York infield at first, second, short, and third. John Miller is in left. Lee Mazzilli is in center. Dave Kingman is in right. And Hodges behind the plate. Seaver two-twoing to Griffey. Swung on at a high pop outside a third. That ball will ride out of here and drop back into the seats. On deck batter for Cincinnati is Danny Dreesen. Rose reaching on an Arab. First by Milner, going to second, all on the same play. On the Arab by Harrelson, moving to third on Seaver's wild pitch. Griffey trying to get him in. Bouncing ball, right side. Rose started, stop. Randall throws. Hey. Hey. Electing to hold at third, although it appeared from this vantage point that he would have been able to score. Well, Marty, I think uh, it would have been a real gamble for Pete, but I think the thing is just that little stutter step toward home caused Randall to look at him and then go to first. Had Randall feel the ball and went to first right away to get grip, but just that one little look, the split second, allowed Kenny to beat the play. So give Griffey an infield hit, whole rows at third with none out. Runners on the corners, and Seaver throws on to first. Now, Seaver is a pitcher that under normal conditions you can't run on. And he's thinking full well that Griffey may have that in mind because twice now he's worked at Crane Pool. Got that big kick to the plate. You may well see Griffey going sometime during this particular situation. Pitch to Dreesen. Off-speed pitch that misses a strike zone a ball. Rose at third, Griffey at first. The Reds trailing 1-0 in the bottom half of the opening inning. Seaver delivers. Dreesen hits a high fly ball to deep center field. That's going to be deep enough to get Rose in. Mazzilli, a step away from the warning track, makes the catch. Rose scores to tie it up, and Griffey goes sliding in safely at second. one nothing, 1-1 to score as... Dreesen's deep fly ball to center field gets Rose in with a tying run and Griffey moving up a base to second. So Danny has his 24th RBI. 
The go-ahead stands at second base with one down, and the batter will be left fielder George Foster. Foster batting 309. He's driven in 21 runs in his club, four home runs. George taking his time getting in against Sieber. Griffey off the back at second. Randall plays games with him, trying to hold him close. Long look back that way. Foster takes a strike on the inside edge. Sieber trying for his 187th career victory tonight. He's been beaten lifetime 109 times. Nothing in one. The count on right-handed batting Foster. Reds and the Mets are tied at a run in the first inning. Foster takes this one. It gets away from Hodges. Griffey will hold his ground at second. John Stearns has been doing the bulk of the Mets catching this season, but right now is sidelined with a mild injury. So Ron Hodges, who would be considered the third catcher on this Mets club, doing the job now behind the plate. Seaver the 1-1 pitch. Foster line drive over third base hit. That's going to get Griffey around with a go-ahead run. Foster will go in jogging to second base with a run scoring double, and we lead it 2-1. Now Sparky Anderson pointing out in our pregame show tonight that he certainly subscribes to the baseball theory that against the quality pitchers in this game, if you're going to get them, for the most part, you better get them early. And the Reds have gotten off to a good start here against Seaver with two first-inning runs and a chance to get another. Johnny Bench, the batter, Foster out at second, 2-1 to on our side. John carries a 2 6 batting average into this game. He swings and he fouls to Hodges mitt. Strike one. Bench has homered five times. He is now looking for his 17th RBI of the season. Here's a high foul ball pulled off to the left and out of play. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Geronimo due up next. The Mets outfield pretty much straight away for Bench, which in itself is an oddity because most clubs will play him to pull, but they're not playing him that way. Seaver has Bench in a hole as he sends in the pitch, and John hits an infield pop. On the right side, Crane Pool coming down the line from first, and he makes a catch. Two down for Geronimo. Geronimo batting 227 has knocked in 11 runs as Homer twice. Last year hit New York pitching at a 207 average with three runs batted in. So Seaver going to work on the left handed batting center fielder with a pitch coming and taking high a fastball. Be playing at 5.30 tomorrow night, single game, and then the season's first doubleheader getting underway here on Sunday afternoon to close out this series and close out the homestand. Foster at second, two away. Geronimo swings at a breaking pitch down and in. Count level to the ball in one strike. Tomorrow afternoon, Pat Zachary will be facing Craig Swan in the 5.30 start. And Sunday... It'll be Jack Billingham and Freddie Norman against Jerry Kuzman and Nino Espinosa. Foul ball out of here. Geronimo behind now. One ball, two strikes. We'll be off next Monday and Tuesday. In a scheduling oddity, we'll be leaving Tuesday night at 6 o'clock to fly to San Francisco to meet the Giants for two. Geronimo strikes out swinging. That's the final out in the Cincinnati first inning, but the Reds nail Seaver for a pair on a couple of hits, two New York errors, and one man left on. Thus, at the end of one, the Reds two, and the Mets one. 
We got him a run as we go to the top of the second. Two to one Cincinnati, and it'll be eight, nine, and one for the Mets. Buddy Harrelson, Tom Seaver, and leadoff batter Lenny Randall. Harrelson mired in probably the worst slump of his major league career, but is hitting at only 120. And when they talk about guys not hitting their weight, a baseball expression, so to speak, it could certainly apply to Harrelson, but hitting 40 points underneath his weight, as a matter of fact, weighing in at 160. Switch hitter bangs the first pitch towards second. Flynn gloves a chest high hop and throws him out. One pitch, one out, it'll bring up Tom Seaver. This reminder, here's how to order Reds tickets by mail. Box seats are 450, reserved seats 350. Send check or money order payable to Cincinnati Reds, Box 1970, Cincinnati. Include 50 cents with each order for handling. Seaver taking his time coming up to the plate on a hot, sultry night here in Cincinnati. Boy, we've had July weather the last week or so, 85 to 90 degrees. And an excellent crowd has turned out to kick off what should be a big, big weekend of baseball in Cincinnati. We hope you're planning to come out. If not tonight, you're not here tomorrow and Sunday for the doubleheader. Fastball is high and inside to Seaver. Tom up 20 times. has had three hits all singles. He's knocked in a couple of runs. Nolan shakes off bench. And then sends in a taken strike. With pitcher against pitcher in the second inning, it's a ball and one strike. Breaking ball dips in nicely at the knees for strike two call. Gary had somewhat of a rough first inning as New York got to him for a trio of hits and scored a run, although Nolan got out of it with a flourish after walking Mazzilli to load him up. He struck out Hodges. Fast ball is head high, two and two the count. One out, base is empty as Nolan walks around the mound. Gary's trying for his third win tonight. Started into his wind-up, stop, starts again. High breaking ball, full count. And the 3-2 pitch. That strike three call. Seaver took it, a fastball away, and Nolan has his third strikeout. Too quickly out for the Mets. It'll bring up Lenny Randall for the second time tonight. He opened the game with a strikeout swinging. Randall, of course, still becoming acquainted with a new league after spending his career over in the American League. But as we talked about earlier, Joe Frazier is lauding this young man's praises, the work he's done not only with a bat, because the batting average speaks for itself, 412, but also for the defensive work that he's turned in for a club that in the last few years has had more than a share of problems in that department. Ground ball by the mound. Long run for Concepcion. Cannot get it as he and Flynn crisscross out behind second base. Randall with a single to center field with two out. As Nolan has served up his fourth base hit. That'll bring up third baseman Jerry Grody. Grody in the first inning single and ultimately came around to score the New York run. One of the real hard-nosed players in Major League Baseball, this man. Breaking pitch off the plate. Pretty much liking him in intensity to Cincinnati's Pete Rose because when Grody puts on that uniform day in and out, he comes to give you everything he's got. Two men out. Here's a throw to first, driving Randall back. Nolan looking over that way. Behind to the batter, Grody. One ball and no strikes. And again, the throw to first. Tom Burgess, the third base coach for the New York Mets. He was the manager of their AAA farm club at Tidewater last year. And Denny Summers doing it at first base. Pitch inside. Looked like Randall had an idea going. Bench came up as if to fire. And Lenny dove back into first base. 
two and zero the count. Randall has been one of the runningest of the Met ball players. He's attempted seven steals with four successes. Lee Mazzilli leads the club with six, has been thrown out five times. Gary again throwing to first. He got Harrelson on a bouncing ball to second first pitch hitting, struck out Seaver. Randall is single, and Grody now a pitch away as Nolan falls behind ball three with a fastball down and away. Three balls, no strikes with John Milner on deck. You'll probably see both pitchers throwing numerous times over to first base tonight. Nolan has just gone that way again. And what's the 3-0 coming? It's over for a call strike, a fastball. Three and one. There goes Randall. Pitch is cut out and foul as Grody went for a pitch out away from him. Lenny Randall running on the 3-1 pitch and a foul ball. We're in the top of the second, the Reds holding a one-run lead over the New York Mets at 2-1. Stroh's employees night at the stadium tonight. Eric Stroh, the assistant to the vice president of marketing of the Stroh Brewery Company from Detroit was here to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Here's a bouncing ball shortstop. Concepcion's play will be to first where he gets Grody and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left on. We have completed one and one-half innings of play with a score, Reds 2, Mets 1. Well, a big weekend of baseball awaits Reds fans at Riverfront. The Mets will be here tomorrow for a 5.30 game, and then on Sunday, it's the first doubleheader of the year. First game starting at 1.15. Plenty of seats are available for both dates. The Red Stadium ticket office opens at 9 o'clock both Saturday and Sunday. As always, the gates open two hours before game time, so come early. Take in batting practice and then see the Reds and the Mets. Tomorrow night at 5.30 and the big doubleheader on Sunday afternoon with plenty of seats available. Seaver hoping for better things here in the bottom of the second inning, both from his defense and from his own ability to try and retire Reds batters. Two to one to score. Concepcion in for openers. Here's a pitch. Taken high and tight. A ball. Doug Flynn on deck. You'll be followed by the pitcher, Gary Nolan. Seaver shaking off Hodges. Here's a 1-0 to the plate. That's high. Ball two. And it's like Seaver struggling a little bit to Try and seek out the proper rhythm here. High and inside. Davey spinning out of the batter's box. Seaver really came in on him. So Tom, who gave up a couple of hits and a couple of runs in the first inning, has gone 3-0 on Dave Concepcion as Davey checks in with George Sugar at third to see what the situation is going to be should this pitch be hittable. Taking strike. Fastball, three and one. Swung on, grounded toward the shortstop. Harrelson has it. His throw is in plenty of time to Crane Pool for out number one. Talking about the fact it was Stroh's employees night here tonight. Eric Stroh out up or down from Detroit. Throw out the ceremonial first pitch and also presented the Stroh Grapefruit League trophy. In pregame ceremonies to Reds manager Sparky Anderson, the trophy that goes to one of two clubs during spring training, either the Reds or the Tigers, when these two teams hook up during the spring training campaign. Doug Flynn with one out. He got around on a high and tight fastball. Actually made contact, so strike one. The Reds winning the trophy for 1977. The two clubs played twice, each winning a game, and then they go by total runs. One ball and one strike. The Reds outscored them 12 to 7. And Cincinnati has won it every year with the exception of one. And that was back in 1973 when the trophy was initiated. Strike is called. 
Tigers won it three games to one when the two clubs played four times that first year in 73. And since then, the Reds have won the trophy every year, 74, 5, 6, and now 7. Of course, we had the Tigers here last night. Just off the plate, it's a 2-2 count on Flynn. Doug starting at second base in this game for Joe Morgan. Why, we have no idea. Could not get a reason on a Sparky Anderson. Here's a pitch, swung on and chopped foul. Now we understand an upset stomach was the reasoning behind Morgan's being held out in this game. So a 2-2 count on Flynn, who's batting 0-9-1. Doug up 11 times, is out a hit. Seaver 2 twoing. High inside, ball three. The Reds leading it 2 to 1 here in the early going. We're in the home second with one out. 3 2 pitch is fouled off to the right down the line and out of play. So the count will stay full on second baseman Doug Flynn. They play Flynn the other way, give him a lot of room on the left field foul line and also in left center. Sieber, as Hodges sends out the sign, Flynn steps away from the plate. Now the 3 2 pitch again. That is chopped along the third baseline. Fair ball. Hodges up, throwing in time. Dougie hit that ball no more than 10, maybe 12 feet. A line hugger off third. Hodges came out from behind that plate to pick it up and fire a strike to Cranepool. So two away. Here's Gary Nolan. Well, the Reds announced tonight that all 51,000-plus available tickets have been sold for the Sunday, June 26 doubleheader with the L.A. Dodgers. Good supply of 350 reserve seat tickets are still available for the other Reds-Dodger games at Riverfront that weekend. Ball to Nolan. 8.05 game on Friday, June 24th, and a 2.15 game on Saturday, June 25th. Ground ball towards short. Harrelson, Crane Poole. They hook up on the out, and the Reds are out in order. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. Through two at Riverfront. The Reds two, and the Mets one. After two full innings of play, the Reds hold the advantage over the New York Mets, a two-to-one count. It'll be John Milner to lead things off against Gary Nolan, and here to call the action for you, Joe Nuxall. All right, Marty, Milner up for the second time in the ball game. In the first inning, a fly ball to Geronimo in... Right center field. After Milner, it'll be Kingman and Cranepool. Red scoring a couple of runs in the first inning. A little bit of help from the Mets. A double error on a fly ball that rose it to left field. Milner dropped the ball, and then Bud Harrelson trying to pick it up. Couldn't find the handle and allowed Rose to reach second base. Feet moving on to third on a wild pitch and scored on Dan Dreesen's sacrifice fly. Griffey tagging up on Dreesen's fly ball, moving on to second where he scored on a double off the bat of George Foster. Milner, a left-handed batter, 275 batting average with four home runs and 10 RBIs. Gary Nolan has given the Mets four hits in the first two innings, has struck out three, walked one. And the one runs scoring in the first. First pitch on the way to Milner, he swings and pops a foul back and out of play. The Reds 15 and 19 for the year. The Mets 14 and 20. Both clubs playing their 35th game. Nolan looking for his third straight win. And the 0-1 delivery. Milner curveball in for call strike. And count 0-2 now to John Milner as he backs away from the plate. Now steps back in. Gary's 0-2. That's a change. Swung on and missed. And that's strikeout number four for Gary Nolan. Dave Kingman steps in. And Dave, a 
hard shot by Dave Concepcion on into left field in the first inning for a base hit. Hingman hitting just 238 with eight home runs and 24 RBIs. Dave has struck out 35 times and 126 times to the plate. This guy can hit him nine miles. He swings and there's a foul ball hit nine miles. That ball into the yellow seats, well foul down in left field. A long strike off the bat of Dave Kingman, 0 and 1. Kingman still has not signed a New York Met contract for the year, playing out his option at the moment, 0 1 delivery, going outside. Not even one ball, one strike. Outfield wall around to the left. Same for the infield. Flynn almost at a normal shortstop position. The pitch swung on and fouled. One and two. Dave Concepcion in the hole. Short and third. And right now, Doug Flynn, who is the second baseman tonight, is playing almost, as we said, at normal shortstop position and just behind the back line. Frank to be playing where the shortstop would play for a pull hitter left-handed. Kingman swings, a line shot picked off by Pete Rose. Pete going to his knees and another sinking liner. And Rose going to his knees off to his left to pick the shot off. So two away, and that'll bring Ed Crane pool to the plate. The ball hooking back at Pete, and... Now Pete looking at his glove. Make sure everything is all right. All right, Ed Cranepool, single to left field to drive in the one New York run. Single to right, rather. He takes a strike from Nolan, a fastball. Cranepool hitting 308 with three homers and now 10 RBIs. Gary back to the play. The chain swung on. Nice play. Rose off to his left. Short hopping, throwing to Dreesen, and that takes care of the Met. A key to find play, moving to his left and short hopping the ball and throwing Cranepool out easily. So the Mets have one, two, three here in the third. Nothing across. And the middle of inning number three, the Reds two, the New York Mets one. All right, it'll be the top of the order for the Reds in the third inning. Rose, Griffey, and Dreesen. Pete scored a run in the first, our first run of the ball game. On that double error and a wild pitch and a sacrifice fly. Hits the first pitch, a low liner picked off by Bud Harrelson at shortstop. Well, Pete jumping on the first pitch delivered by Seaver. It's a low liner that Bud Harrelson picks off about knee high. One out and Ken Griffey to the plate. Kenny, an infield single in the first inning. Moved to second on a fly ball to center. Rose scoring on that fly ball off the bat of Dries and then scoring on George Foster's double. Seaver into the wind and his pitch. Griff takes it low and inside a ball. Now, we always see it, but Tom Seaver, a picture of how a pitcher is supposed to throw a baseball. Just perfect. Shakes off a sign from Hodges. And the 1-0 to Griffey. A pie fastball. Two balls, no strikes. Reds and the Mets tomorrow, 5.30 starting time. And then the first double header of the year, Sunday afternoon. Griffey takes his strike. It's... Two and one. Seaver has his sign. And the 2-1 to Griff. That's high. Three balls to strike. Mets with a team ERA of 335. Reds not right now at 324, or 424, rather. Pitch, low it inside, ball four. And that's the 
first walk issued by Tom Seaver. Griffey moving on to first base. That'll bring Dan Dreesen to the plate. Dan with his 24th RBI of the year in the first inning. Sacrifice fly to Missouri in center field. Score, Feed Rose. And he hitting 262, four homers. Seaver throws to first base, and Griffey steps back. Tom to the belt. There goes Griffey. The pitch is taken. Hodges throw. Not near in time. And Ken Griffey in with a stolen base for Kenny. That is number eight in ten attempts. Griffey down easy with a stolen base. Count one ball, no strikes to Dan Dreesen to pitch up a bit. A good pitch to throw on for Hodges. All right, Seaver, the stretch, looks back at Griffey. And the pitch, Dreesen, a half swing, and he went too far. Count evens one and one. Pitch right in on Dan. He started and tried to stop the bat, but was not successful. Count evens one ball, one strike. The stretch. He were looking back at Griffey. Harrelson in behind him. Now time is called as Dan Dreesen asked for time. Seaver delivering the pitch anyway. Bud Harrelson trying to slip in behind Ken Griffey. Had Ken going back to the bag and Seaver holding. And Dreesen asked for time out. Here's the pitch. Danny swings on it, doesn't get it. Fastball away, one and two. George Foster on deck. This receiver is ninth start of the year. He's completed three games. Receiver's 1-2. Swung on, fly ball, left center field. Chasing it is Mazzilli. He has room. They're waiting, tagging Griffey, and Kenny will move on to third base easily. Well, two away now, and that'll bring George Foster to the plate. Dreesen flying out to Mazzilli. Mazzilli and... Left center field for out number two. George Foster steps in. George with his sixth double of the year to score Griffey in the first inning, his 22nd RBI. George, a 315 batting average. San Diego leading Montreal 4 to 1, fourth inning at Montreal. The Dodgers won, the Pirates nothing, third inning at Pittsburgh. Pitch on the way to Foster. A broken bat soft liner to Crane Pool at first base. He picks it off, and that's it. Before the Reds, no runs, no hits, no errors. A runner left on base, and at the end of three, Cincinnati 2, New York 1. When you have a family, you just can't do it alone. A football partnership perfected the forward pass. Gus DeRay, passer, and Newt Rockney, receiver. The sands of Lake Erie were the proving ground. Perhaps you need a partner to protect the precious things you own and those you love. Your Grange agent is a perfect partner who will study your business and your personal needs. The rates will be reasonable and the clean service fast. When your Grange agent says, let's be partners, it's an offer you shouldn't refuse. Three inning totals show the Mets with a run on four hits and two errors. The Reds, two runs, two hits, no errors. It'll be Lee Mazzilli to lead it off in the fourth inning and back to the action. Marty Brenneman. Okay, thank you, Joe. Mazzilli in the first inning coaxed a walk out of Gary Nolan. That's the only free pass that Gary has served up through the first third of this game. He has struck out three. Randall in the first. Hodges in the first. Make it four strikeouts. 
Van Siever in the second and punched out Milner leading off the third inning. All three runs coming in the first. And both pitchers seemingly now have settled down. Gary has given up one hit in the last two times out. That was to Randall in the second inning. While Seaver is not allowed a base hit since Foster doubled across the go-ahead run in the bottom of the first. Gary going to the rosin bag as Mazzilli comes back to the plate for the second time. Rose will play up a bit at third base for him. Mazzilli has good speed. He swings and hits one into right field. Griffey jogging in a few paces and puts it away. One down. It'll be catcher Rod Hodges stepping in. Hodges, a strikeout swinging his first time. Nolan with a good career record against the Mets. He's beat him 12 times in 19 decisions. And an excellent record here at Riverfront of 44 wins and 18 losses. Check swing foul ball by Hodges. Hodges, a native of Franklin County, Virginia, makes his offseason home in Rocky Mount, Virginia. He bluffs a bunt and takes a breaking pitch away. One and one. Drafted by three different clubs before finally being drafted by New York in 72. First drafted by Baltimore, Kansas City, and then Atlanta in free agent drafts of 1970 and 71. Two balls and a strike. Ron, not related to the late great manager of the Mets, Gil Hodges, but he grounds one to second. Flynn, good play on the ball, throws him out. Ironically, Ron was a 1972 roommate of Gil Hodges Jr. during the first year of pro ball at Pompano Beach, Florida. Two out now, and it'll bring up to the plate the shortstop Harrelson. Harrelson leading off the second, bounced out to Flynn. So Doug has had a couple of fielding chances here tonight and have come up with both of them. Two away. Reds leading at two to one in the top of the fourth inning. Harrelson shortens up on the bat and takes a pitch high. Mets have had four hits, getting three in the first. One zero delivery. Low ball two, two and nothing. Tom Burgess flashing the side from the third base coaching box. Nolan banging the ball into the glove as he checks in for the side and the 2-0 delivery. That is strike one call. Gary pleased as he can be about the start he's gotten off to, although still having some problems with his legs. He had them not up on him in his first start against the Cardinals. Foul out of here by Harrelson. And would you believe that it'll be two weeks this coming Tuesday night since he went to the mound for the first time this season and had those leg problems, and he still has remnants of knots, especially up in his left thigh. So the legs are the only thing that concern him right now. He feels like all things being as they should be, he could go nine tonight. Harrelson, another bat handle foul ball off to the left. And the count holds at 2-2. This guy, when he's got his good stuff going, is can show you what pitching is all about. Harrelson swinging at the pitch in on him and chops it foul at the plate. Well, with two down and nothing going on for the New York Mets. A holding 2-2 count on shortstop Bud Harrelson. Tom Seaver on deck.
Gary with a wind, the kick, and the pitch. And a bouncing ball slowly hit to the right side. Dreesen sweeps it up, throws to Nolan, and he bangs the bag just ahead of the oncoming runner. Mets are out in order. That's the second consecutive inning that Gary has turned the trick. And after three and a half, Reds two, Mets one. It continues to be a one-run game as we journey on into the home fourth inning at Riverfront. Tom Seaver checking out his defensive alignment before dealing with Johnny Bench for the second time. Here's a pitch, and Bench with a check swing on a breaking ball. Ball one. Seaver got Bench to pop to Cranepool in the first inning. So Johnny's batting average stands at an even 2-5-0. Swing, high drive, deep left field, hooking, and it's a foul ball. John going after a pitch out away from him and pulling it foul deep into the seats left field. Well, two of the great names in sport and two of the great names in baseball going one-on-one -on -one here in the fourth inning. Tom Seaver against Johnny Bench. Another foul, this one straight back. John hoping that his knee problems are a thing of the past to the extent that it'll force him to continually sit down from time to time. Check swing, fastball low and outside, two and two. Of course, you don't expect him to catch all four games of this series. But with a doubleheader coming up Sunday, Bill Plummer will be getting in some more playing time. Seaver with a 2-2. Bench lining foul past third. That one banging into the seats down by the New York bullpen. Cesar Geronimo, the on-deck batter. Then we'll take a look at Davey Concepcion. Bench waving the bat around. Now looking out toward the mound at Seaver. Bat is cocked and waiting, and here comes the pitch. Bouncing ball, foul, toward and into the New York dugout. Again, if you missed it earlier, the Reds announced tonight that all 51,000-plus available tickets have been sold for the Sunday, June 26 doubleheader with the L.A. Dodgers here. 2-2 two -two again. Strike three swinging. Seaver picks up his second strikeout. Along with that announcement, we will tell you also that a good supply of 350 reserve seat tickets are still available for the other Reds Dodgers games that weekend here. 805 Friday, June 24th, 215 Saturday, June 25th. Here's Geronimo with one out. He struck out on the first. Swing and a miss on a high heater. Almost mind boggling when you can. Consider the number of fans that have seen the Reds and the Dodgers play both here and in L.A. during the years of the 70s. More than three million. It's almost unbelievable. Inside, backs him off the plate. Of course, it's really not hard to believe when you consider that, one, it's the hottest rivalry in baseball, and two, the teams have finished one, two in the Western Division of the National League in five of the past seven years. Geronimo fouling it out of play. Of course, immediately on the horizon, as far as the Reds and the Dodgers are concerned, next weekend, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon, will be at Dodger Stadium. That should be an interesting three days. Ground ball might be, and no, oh, fine play by Cranepool. Throwing to Seaver, got the out. That ball at base hit ticketed on it, but Cranepool picked it off going off to his right, and Seaver credited him with coming off the mound hurriedly to cover the bag and just getting Geronimo by a step at first base. Two away for Dave Concepcion. Davey let off the second, grounded out to his opposite number, Bud Harrelson. Strike to him. 
The Reds leading at two to one. Mets got one in the top of the first. We got to Seaver for a pair in the bottom of the same inning. We're now in the home fourth inning with two out. Line drive hits to left field. The left-hander Milner comes up firing, and Concepcion will settle for a two-out single. Don't forget to cap off your Memorial Day holiday with a trip to see the Reds and the Braves here at Riverfront. We'll start it off Memorial Day evening at 8.05, and plenty of seats and all prices are available. So purchase your tickets in advance at the Reds and the Braves right here on Memorial Day evening at 8.05. Doug Flynn hit one just off the plate on the third baseline in the second as Hodges, a catcher, threw him out. There goes Concepcion. Line drive, softly hit right field, base hit. Davey comes to third. Kingman can't find it. They wave Concepcion home. Here comes the throw. He's going to be safe. Flynn in a soft base hit line drive to right field. Kingman had to go to foul ground to pick it up. He threw to Randall. Randall fired to Hodges, but the sliding Concepcion was in, and the Reds lead at 3-1. to one. Flynn picking up his first RBI of the year. As Davey scores from first base on the base hit to right. Nolan looks at a strike. So the Reds have put together a couple of two out base hits to score. Nolan chops one. Here's Sieber off the mound. Gloves and throws. Got him. Ball hit on one hop. Third base side. Seaver goes to Crane Pool. The inning is over, but the Reds get a run on two hits with one left. And after four, Cincinnati three and New York one. Did you know there's a new microwave range that cooks three ways from Roper naturally? The Roper combination microwave range lets you bake or roast your regular electric way. Or use super-fast microwave only in the big oven. Or combine regular heat with microwave at the same time to save 75% of the cooking time. With your Roper microwave range, you don't need special recipes, no complicated time and temperature conversions, and no special utensils. A typical 30-minute family meal is meatloaf, bread, scalloped potatoes, and pie. All cooked at one time and in one oven with Roper's Combination Microwave Cooking. If it says Roper, it's quality. See all the Roper ranges in the exciting new Roper Combination Microwave Range at Hoffman Appliance in Nelsonville, Ohio. Tools TV and Appliance in Asheville, Ohio. And Wiseman Appliance in Crooksville, Ohio. We talked about it earlier tonight on our pregame show with Sparky Anderson, but maybe you missed it. Does the date May 20th mean anything? Well, it was two years ago on this very date here at Riverfront against this very ball club. The only difference was it was Jerry Kuzman pitching, and he beat the Reds 6-2 to two to send the Cincinnati record to 20-20. 20 and 20. The next night, with Doug Flynn hitting his first major league home run ever and Tony Perez also going long ball, the Reds beat this man, Seaver, 11-4, to four, and that was the first of 41 victories in the next 50 games for the Reds that... Of course, when the dust had settled, the Reds had made a travesty of the Western Division and went on to win their first of back-to-back -back world championships. So maybe on this day, two years hence, we can beat Seaver tonight and start a string that will close down ground rapidly on that L.A. Dodger ball club. Here is Seaver to lead off the fifth. Nolan struck him out in the second. We now lead it three to one. Chopper foul, third base side, and Coach Tom Burgess comes up with the ball. Nolan has retired seven batters in a row since Lenny Randall's second inning two-out hit. 
high and inside. He's one and one on Seaver. Two balls in the strike. Of course, I don't think anybody will forget. Certainly not the followers of these two clubs that playoff four years ago for the National League pennant. The Mets won it. Then went on to the World Series against Oakland and lost. But of course, the playoff highlighted by that battle between Bud Harrelson and Pete Rose. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Nolan pacing himself on this warm May evening now calling time tying his right shoelace as Seaver waits at the plate. Two two pitch grounded third base backhanded by Rose throwing from foul ground he got it. Nice play. Well I'll tell you Pete has turned in a couple of nice defensive plays tonight. Seaver out third to first and brings up Randall who has struck out and single tonight's scoreboard stumper Mark Fidrich was the American League's rookie of the year in 1976 who was the last Detroit player prior to Fidrich to win rookie of the year honors. That seems like I've come in on the same movie. It was a scoreboard stumper last night also. Here's Randall now with. 25% of the New York Met hit total. Breaking pitch missing. I'll take a guess and say Harvey Keene in 1953. Fastball up. Ball two. Might be a pretty good guess. Randall ball three three and nothing. It still is L.A. one Pittsburgh nothing in the fourth inning. We think that Steve Garvey accounted for the Dodger run with a home run. Our information via the Western Union sports ticker was a bit garbled. Randall gets a walk second allowed by Nolan. It comes with one out in the fifth and will bring up Jerry Grody. Brody single he scored in the first inning and then grounded out to Concepcion in the second. I'm talking about Fidrich we saw him pitch last night and boy for a guy who has not worked since spring training had knee surgery some seven weeks ago. He did quite a job and was very very entertaining to the crowd here that saw the kid glove game. Randall going on the pitch cut on base hit into left field by Concepcion Randall tries to come to third and will as the throw goes to second. So the Mets come up with something in this fifth inning as Lenny Randall works a one out walk from Nolan and with the runner going on the pitch to the plate Grody bangs a single through the left side. and third with one away for John Milner as Johnny Bench goes out to the mound to talk with Gary Nolan. Fidrich a very hyperactive young man and I don't think from watching him last night that it's anything in terms of being showy or put on that's Mark Fidrich personified he leaped over the railing going back to the mound ran off the field congratulated his players on their defensive play something else. OK Nolan in the jam as he tries to work out of it delivers Milner swings and misses. Activity underway in the Cincinnati bullpen with left hander Woody Fryman. Strike two call. Got another scoreboard stumper up there. Two for the price of one. That ain't too bad now. Which one of the following players never won a National League batting title? Debs Garms, Dick Grote, Mel Ott, Dixie Walker, 
Arico Cardi. Pitch in the dirt. Milner had an ocean but held up. One and two the count. Left-handed batting John Milner as the pitch comes playward. He swings, he loops one along the right field line. That's a foul ball by about a foot. Hitting down into the Cincinnati bullpen. And apparently it cost John Milner a bat as he throws that one aside. And the bat boy comes running out with a couple of pieces of wood in his hand for Milner's selection. Never quite reaching the heights that those in the Met organization expected out of this man, although, of course, still a young man. So he's got time. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout, and Gary does the number on John Milner for the second time. Hey, that was a good fastball down, and Gary... Seems to have real good velocity tonight. Throwing the ball, well, I would say hard, in fact, on certain occasions. Well, that's his fifth strikeout. Here now is Kingman, who single a his first time up and lined hard to Rose in the third. Pick your answer out up there. Mm. At Deb's Garms. That's wrong. Kingman with two out, low and away, ball one. Melot. Swinging at a pitch away from him, and Kingman chops it foul. I don't know. I know Rico Cardi did. I know Dick Rode did. Deb's Garms I've never heard of. I would assume Dixie Walker did, and the one that would appear to be the most likely apparently didn't. Two men on, two men out. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Kingman, swing and a miss. Nolan kept it down and kept it away from big number 26. Joe mentioned Dave playing his option out. Not taking anything away from his ability to hit home runs. I think he might be very, very surprised if he puts himself on the free agent market come November. No question, nobody will ever question his ability to hit the long ball when he hits it. Hit 37 last year and knocked in 86 runs and only 123 games. He, of course, was out with an injury. He fouls this one back. But as Joe pointed out earlier, he has struck out 35 times already this season and carries a batting average up to this time at the plate of 242. Probably can hit him longer, farther than anybody playing the game today. One ball, two strikes as the runners lead at first and third. Kingman strikes out swinging and the inning is over. So Gary Nolan rising to the occasion pitches himself out of this jam. No runs, one hit, no errors and two left and after four and a half the Reds over the match three to one. Stay with the winners, stay with the champs, that's what you hear me say. Cons, big red smokies and jumbo franks, eat them up any old way. Big Red Smokies serve them at night or any time of the day. And Jumbo Franks, beef and regular grade on a dinner tray. J-A-H-M-S, spelled with a capital K. Pop them in the pan, they plump up big, and that's the way they stay. Cons, Big Red Smokies and Jumbo Franks, eat them and holler, hooray! J-A-H-M-S, spelled with a capital K. Cook them on the grill and have some fun. Yes, siree, I say. Cons, Big Red Smokies, and Jumbo Franks. Buy them today, okay? K-A-H-M-S, spelled with a capital K. You can depend on cons. Top.
of the order, bottom of the fifth inning, three Reds, one match, Pete Rose, who has gone 0 for 2, although reached on two errors in the first inning, came in to score our first run and then lined to shortstop Harrelson his last time up. He takes a pitch inside as he snaps his head away. Pete batting 331. Trying to extend a hit string to six straight games tonight. And 28 of it is last 31. Bluff Sabant takes the strike. Orange Pete had a 20 game hitting streak earlier this season. Waiting on the 1 1 pitch, he takes this one on the outside for a strike. Cardinals get behind early as San Francisco puts two runs across in the top of the first inning at St. Louis. Here's a fly ball hit down the left field line heading toward the corner curving and a foul ball. One and two now. In the fourth inning San Diego over Montreal 7 1 Philadelphia Houston scoreless in the second in the dome. Number 14 climbing back in is Seba rocks to the wine pitches just inside tried to slide one over on the corner but Rose was not having any of it and neither was a plate umpire Paul Pryor two and two Seaver has been touched for four hits the Mets have had five hits off Nolan three to one to score. Ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Seaver as far as he can go with Rose. And the payoff pitch is on the way to the plate. That's a check swing foul ball. Rose, as is usually the case, up among the league leaders in various and sundry categories. Base hits. Run score. Batting average. Year in and year out, he turns a trick. Here's a 3-2 pitch again, and he's on with a walk as Seaver came inside. Seaver's walked his second batter. His first walk went to this man, Ken Griffey, who walked in the third inning with one out, stole second, moved to third on a flyout, but was left there. Kenny had an infield hit to second base in the first inning and scored a run. Infield double play depth. Griffey swings and pops it straight back and out of play. Hodges starts back on the ball, but sees very quickly that it'll be over the screen. Harrelson shading Griffey toward the second base back from his shortstop position as he listens to his second baseman, Lenny Randall, who's pulled well off the bag and toward first. Third baseman, Grody, a step or two behind the bag and off the line. There goes Rose, pitches cut out here toward the alley in left center field. Miller giving chase, can't get it. That's going to get Rose home. Miller comes up throwing for third. Rose around and two, the play for the fourth run. Red move three runs ahead as Ken Griffey with feet running on the pitch drives a two-bagger to deep left center field. Kenny picking up his 14th RBI. Rose is home with a run, and that two-bagger for Griffey, his 11th of the year. And that base hit apparently is going to get an active New York Met bullpen for the first time tonight. Bob Myrick, a left-hander, will get up to start throwing as Hodges, breaking up his meeting on the mound with Seaver, heads on back toward the plate.
Now it's Danny Dreesen. Ball to him. Dan, a sacrifice fly to run home. Hit one to center in the first and fly it out to center in the third. Two balls, no strikes. Dodgers have added to their lead. It's now four to nothing over Demery and the Pirates in the fifth. That's a second game of what will be a four-game series at Three Rivers Stadium. High fly ball, hit back of first, backpedaling Cranepool. Over there also Randall. Randall calls him off the ball, and the second baseman makes a catch. Quick throw down to third base. Griffey, of course, having no thought at all of trying to advance on the pop. So Dreesen becomes the first fifth inning out. It'll bring up George Foster. RBI double in the first inning. Line out to first baseman Crane Poole on a broken bat shot in the third. One for two. Met bullpen busy with left-hander Bob Myrick. Sieber in the match trailing 4-1 with one down and Griffey at second base. Foster a taker all the way on the inside fastball. Here's a backward glance at second. Randall sneaking into the bag. Griffey not giving any room at all. He maintains his big lead. High and inside. Hodges bluffs a throw. Two balls and no strikes. Everything underway in the American League with the exception of Minnesota, California and Seattle and Oakland. Those two games will be starting later on on the West Coast tonight. Foster 2-0 and in waiting. Here's a pitch. That's foul. Baltimore has jumped out in front of the Yankees in the fourth inning. 3-2. to two. That's Jim Palmer against Don Gullett. Milwaukee boasting a 5-1 lead in the seventh over Boston. Cleveland, Kansas City, nothing, nothing. Third, fourth inning, Chicago. Tigers, three. White Sox, nothing. Kemp, a first inning, two-run homer for Detroit. Griffey comes to third. Ball popped back of the plate. Hodges coming back to the screen. Makes the grab. Drops the ball. We'll pause for station identification on the Reds Baseball Network. WMNI FM, Columbus, Ohio, the 50,000 watt voice of the world champion Cincinnati Reds. Stay tuned immediately following the game for the very best in quadrophonic stereo music. I just dropping Foster's pop up back of the plate. Apparently, no error scored on it. He had been running like gangbusters toward third. He's back on at second. And the 2-2. After the long look by Seaver, here it is. That is hit into left center field. Got a chance. Mazzilli coming hard. He will make the catch. Lee Mazzilli with a running catch as he picked it off with that glove below the belt to... Knock off Foster and now Johnny Bench. If you're a big souvenir buff, then you'll want to be at Riverfront Sunday, June 5th, because that'll be Dave Concepcion poster day. The Reds will battle the Astros in a 2-15 game, and every fan 21 and under gets a free two-foot by three-foot full-color action poster of the popular Red shortstop. Make your plans now and purchase your tickets in advance. The Reds and the Astros Sunday, June 5th, poster day, featuring Dave Concepcion. Johnny Bench is 0 for 2. Line drive, base hit left field. Griffey heading home with our fifth run of the night, and we lead by four. Well, Tom Seaver's old nemesis, the Cincinnati Reds, are once again doing a number on him. 
Bench driving a single to left field with Griffey scoring. John has his 17th RBI. Second run on the second hit of the inning, and here's Cesar Geronimo. Foul ball will be out of play. Geronimo for two robbed in the fourth inning on a good play by Crane Pool of his hard ground ball. Strike swinging. No balls and two strikes. The Reds have now reached Seaver for six hits and scoring their five runs. You hear the clapping in the background. Geronimo strikes out swinging on a high fast one. Second time Seaver has gotten him tonight. Another productive inning run wise for the Reds. Two runs, two hits, one man left on. And as we move to sixth inning action at Riverfront, the Reds five and the Mets one. Well, the Reds scoring runs in three of the first five innings hold a four run lead over the New York Mets. Weekend series opener, five to one to score. Stadium just now completing their tidying up duties. As prepares to work to the likes of Ed Cranepool, Lee Mazzilli, and Ron Hodges. Bob Eric continues to look to the Mets bull. Should get down to that number nine spot, being four runs down. You can bet that Joe Frazier will go to his bench. Tomorrow afternoon in the 5.30 start. Since mound selection, we'll count with right-hander Craig Swan. New York carrying action. The on the National League. And of that nine, six of them are starting pitchers. Only with three bona fide relievers, a young man throwing now, Myrick, then Bob Apodaca, a right hander, and their ace, Skip Lockwood. Here's Crane Pool, and here's Nolan. Here's a high, deep drive. It's a right field, and you can chalk that one up. A green seed home run to right, leading off the sixth inning for Ed Crane Pool, and the Mets have their second run and now trail by three. Fourth homer of the year for Crane Pool. Went to hacking on Nolan's first pitch and left no doubt on anyone's mind in this ballpark of where that ball was going. I mean, Gary was throwing a fastball trying to get ahead. He jumped all over it. Boy, did he ever. Now Mazzilli attempts to bunt his way aboard and fouls it to the screen. Nolan gives up his third home run. He was rocked for a couple of home runs by the San Francisco Giants his last time out, but really settled down after that and working seven innings and giving up only four hits. Strike two swinging. Billy Madlock and Terry Whitfield got him in the third inning of that game five days ago here. Once again, Fryman throws in the Reds bullpen. No balls and two strikes on center fielder Lee Mazzilli, who has walked and fly to right. Outside for the pitch. High pop on the infield left side. It'll be Rose's ball to play. Pete just a step or two behind the bag and brings it in. Now the catcher, Hodges. Consider the fact the Mets have Espinosa, Kuzman, Matlack, Sieber, Swan, and Jackson Todd, a youngster who was recently called up from their AAA farm club at Tidewater and picked up his first win of the season yesterday. Joe Frazier hoping that New York will see fit to go down to that AAA ball club and bring up a pitcher soon. It would likely be Rick Baldwin. Here's a base hit to center field. The 
The Mets trying to battle back in the sixth inning. Have received a leadoff home run from Cranepool and now a one-out single up the middle by Ron Hodges. Now we wait for Bud Harrelson to find a bat, the proper bat, down in the New York dugout. Well, we've got a momentary holdup. As Paul Pryor, the plate umpire, looks in there and wants him to hurry things along. Five to two the score. Reds on the long end. And we're going to get a pinch hitter for Bud Harrelson. He's going to remain in the dugout, and Mike Phillips is going to come on and pinch hit. Phillips, the former San Francisco Giant, batting 169 with a home run. That came at Wrigley Field in Chicago. He's knocked in two runs. So Joe Frazier going to his bench for his number eight batter. Bud Harrelson. And barring the double play ball, will be going to his bench again to hit receiver with Bruce Beauclair standing in the odd deck circle swinging a bat. Nolan staying loose by throwing down a Johnny Bench as Phillips, a left-handed batter, now strolls toward the plate. One run in, one man on, one man out. For Phillips, Rose will play up at third. The pitch. Checking swing, ball one. Hitting room for Phillips is left center. Geronimo cutting down on the power alley in right center by shading him that way. Foster straight away and left. Concepcion, Flynn, a double play depth. Dreesen playing behind the runner at first. And here's a swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Pause at the belt. Phillips again swings through it. One ball, two strikes. Phillips behind as he bats for Harrelson. Check of Hodges. Strike three swinging. Pretty artful bit of pitching by Kerry Nolan on the part of Mike Phillips, Joe. Great change. Yep. See you later. Bye, yeah. Like you, Larry. Now, you didn't have to bring that up. I was going to congratulate you for being the winning pitcher in the celebrity game. We have more punch than you guys. Yeah. I hope the shots you did. Oh. Yeah. Here's Bo Claire, another left-handed batter hitting for Seaver. He swings and hits one in the air to center field. Geronimo will play this one to end the inning, and he does. So for the Mets in the sixth, one run, two hits. The home run by Cranepool got him on the board. One man left on and threw five and a half. The Reds five and New York two. A couple of changes for New York. Mike Phillips remains in playing shortstop. The new pitcher is left-hander Bob Myrick. M-Y-R-I-C-K. 6'1". He weighs 10 at 195 pounds. Myrick, 24 years old, from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. 0-1 by way of record this season with a 360 earned run average. This will be his 10th appearance, all in relief. He'll start it off against Dave Concepcion, who's one for two, has scored a run. Ground ball in the hole at short. Phillips comes up firing. On the low throw, nice pickup by Cranepool. You know, you really didn't, you didn't, you weren't fair last night. I got to tell you that. One of the local disc jockeys in town, Bruce Ryan, you dropped down on him and threw a breaking pitch. Uh, that was my submarine ball. Oh, well, well, whatever it was, it had a wrinkle to it. That's the first time I had to go to it. All the games. <laughs> and... Doug Flynn fouls off the pitch. This is serious trouble. You don't about to tie it up there. Well, I'll tell you what. That poor lad. Well, I apologize to him, but when you walk between those white lines, you get tough. I know you do. <laughs> you had fire in your eye. Here's a fly ball hit along the right 
field line, and that's going to drop foul in the Reds' bullpen. Strike two on Flynn. Jerry Thomas scored on an illegal pitch. Oh, did he? Yeah. That must have been after I was asked politely to leave was, the game. That was the tennis ball. It's going to hit you in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had like a fool had to go swing at that pitch preceding it and hit a 48 hopper back to the mound. Pitch inside for Myrick to Flynn a ball. I'll tell you this, you shocked 30,000 people. When I did what? When you hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Ground ball again to the left side. Phillips on to first, and again he throws low, and again Greenpool makes the play. Two out as the fans here think possibly Doug beat that throw, but Andy Olson on top of it says out. That yeah, was a fun night. And, uh, really a great uh, great crowd for the young not old kids of greater Cincinnati. And it's good equipment for them, good balls, good bats. A lot of baseball played around this town. Well, the surrounding areas. Gary Nolan looking at a strike as Myrick tries to knock off the Reds in order here in the sixth inning. We lead them five to two. Swing and a miss. Gary has bounced to short. He's tapped out to the mound. Seaver out of here after five innings. Swing and a foul. And that ball came up underneath the arm of the plate umpire, Paul Pryor. Ball wedged in between his side and his arm. Count holding it two strikes. Nolan a foul ball. Pitching line on Seaver. He goes five, allows six hits and five runs. Four of them were earned. He struck out three, walked two, delivered a wild pitch, and right now is in line to absorb his third loss of the year. Nolan strikes out swinging, and the Reds are out one, two, three. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on after six. Cincinnati five and New York two. You know, different folks have different ways to spend their time, enjoy their days. Me, I like to fish. I really do. There's something good about a lazy creek. Helps me relax from a long, hard week like my Red Fox Chew and Tobacco, the relaxing chew. It's soft and moist and mild for sure. The flavor's fresh. The taste is pure. Red Fox is best. I like it. Yes, I do. So I keep me an extra pouch of Red Fox by my side in my tackle box. When it comes to tobacco, those Red Fox folks come through. Why don't you try Red Fox? Look for it in the white pouch with the picture of old Red taking it easy. Red Fox 2 in the back of. Now it's better than ever. So if you like to relax, and I'll bet you do, treat yourself to a Red Fox 2. Because Mr. Taking It Easy never tasted so good. Red Fox. We go to the top of the seventh inning. We hold a three-run lead over the New York Mets. Gary Nolan, nine outs away from winning his third game of the year without a loss as he gets set to work to lead off batter Lenny Randall. Back to call the action. Here's Joe. All right, Marty. Lenny Randall up for the fourth time in a ball game. He struck out in the first inning, single to center in the second, walked in the fifth. Gary, through the first six innings, has given the Mets seven hits, has struck out six, walked two. Both runs earned run. One in the first inning, and then Ed Crane pulls leadoff homer in the sixth. Red's leading it. 5 2. American League scores Milwaukee leading Boston 5 to 1 in the seventh inning. Taking them down. Go to the National League. Chicago at Atlanta apparently having some problems down there getting underway. No score yet. San Diego leading Montreal 8-4, 7th inning. The Dodgers now 5 to nothing over the Pirates. 
fifth inning. All right, Randall, the bunt attempt, and he fouls it away on Nolan's first pitch. Cardinals leading 3-2 to two over the Giants' fourth inning. Giants jumped on top with two runs. Cardinals came back with three. Here's the 0-1. Randall swings, misses a change. 0-2. Randall, a switch hitter. Left-handed hitting 4-10. Right-handed hitting 4-55. 0 and 2 Nolan out on top as he's into the wind, the pitch. That's just off the plate. One and two now to Lenny Randall. Randall, Grody, and Milner here in the third inning, or in the seventh, I should say, for the New York Mets. Gary back to the plate. That swung on and missed a change. Seven strikeouts for Gary Nolan. Second time Gary has gotten Randall swing. Gary Grody at the plate. Jerry owns two of the seven hits. He takes a curve at high from Nolan the ball. That's an eight strike us for Nolan. Fastball high, and it's 2-0 and now. And seven of the eight strikeouts have been swinging. We got Seaver on a call third strike back in the second inning, but all the other seven of them have been swinging. All right, he delivers. Grody takes high and inside. 3-0 and now to Jerry Grody with John Milner on deck. Grody singled in the first, scored the... First New York run, grounded to short in the second, single to left in the fifth. I Don Nolan three and zero and working. That's a strike three and one. Well, the balloting gets underway tomorrow for the All Star Game to be played this year at Yankee Stadium in New York. Brody swings and pulls a wave foul down the left side. Count goes full now to Jerry Grody. Nolan has walked two. Walked Randall. There's ball four. Third walk issued by Gary Nolan. Brazili and Randall received the other two. Cody moves on to first base, and here's John Milner. Milner, after a fly ball to left, right center in the first inning, went down swinging his next two times up, third and fifth inning. Reds leading at 5-2 to two here in the seventh inning, and again, Woody Fryman heads down to the Cincinnati bullpen to start throwing. Nolan sets and delivers. Miller takes inside a ball. Andreessen playing behind Grody at first base. Dave Kingman moves to the on-deck circle. Gary standing behind the pitching rubber now steps on and looks into bench. Has to sign the stretch and the pitch. Milner takes again, going inside. Two balls, no strikes. John Matlack getting in some throwing down in the New York bullpen. Houston leads Philadelphia 2 to nothing, 6th inning at Houston. Nolan ready in the 2-0. Miller swings and hits it into right field of base at Grody to second and makes the turn, and he's going to hold right there. Ken Griffey returns to the infield in a hurry. That is hit number 8 for New York. And brings Dave Kingman to the plate. Grody at second. Milner first. Dave Kingman at the plate. Kingman one for three. Single hard into left field in the first inning. Lined hard to Rose in the third. And struck out in the fifth. 
came in with 24 RBIs. He leads the Mets in that department, also in home runs with eight, with a 238 batting average. Again, the Reds infield shifts to the left of second base, Doug Flynn. All the way to the left of second in the outfield, wall around to the left. Nolan sets and delivers, and Kingman swings and misses. Gary in the fifth inning after Seaver went out, Randall walked, Grody singled to left to move. Randall around to third base with one away, but he got Milner and Kingman on strikes to end the inning. The 0-1 swung on. That's a little pop-up. And Bench will take it in fair territory along the first baseline. Gary getting in on Dave Kingman for out number two, and Ed Crane pulled to the plate. Crane pool, two for three, has driven in both of the New York runs, a single in the first inning, then the third bounced to Rose at third base, then the home run in the sixth is fourth of the year. Crane pool, left-handed batter. Grody at second, Milner at first, two away. Reds leading at five to two. Or Bowen has joined Prime in the bullpen. Pitch swung on and missed the chain. Dodgers have picked up another run and they now lead the Pirates six to nothing. That being in the sixth inning. Here's the 0-1. Crane pool swings and misses again. So quickly Nolan on front 0-2 to hit Crane pool. Seventh inning, the Reds with a 5-2 to two lead. The match for the runners at first and second and two out, and an 0-2 count to Ed Cranepool as Nolan walks around the pitching mound and now walks up the side, stands, looks into home, and now makes his way up to the pitching river. He's 0-2 to Ed Cranepool. Has his sign from bench, the stretch, and the pitch. That swung on and foul. Lee Mazzilli on deck. Gary working slowly. Rubs up the baseball. Now bends forward to Tunis. Now back on to the pitching rubber and again the stretch. He delivers. That swung on and chopped foul. Another change. Down holding 0 and 2. Nolan down behind the pitching mound. Now steps back on. Has his sign. And again, the 0-2 pitch. That swung on and missed. And he got him with a changeup. Nine strikeouts for Gary Nolan. He gets out of mild trouble here in the seventh inning. In the inning for the Mets, no runs, a hit, no errors. Two runners left on base. And at the middle of the seventh, the Reds five, the New York Mets two. And you found a place with plenty of space where nothing can go wrong. You're in the mood for fun and good food, and you brought Stroh's beer along. Charlie, I thought we were going to have a party. We are, Linda, we are. But Charlie, how can we have a party in the middle of nowhere? I don't see anyone around. Who's going to eat all this great food I prepared and drink all this Stroh's beer? Just watch, Linda. You take one ice-cold can of Stroh's beer and... <laughs> Look for Stroh's Stay Cold 12 Packs or the Stroh Case wherever you buy beer. And throw a party anywhere, anytime. It's throw a party time. The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. 
All right, here in the seventh inning for the Reds, the top of the order, Rose, Griffey, and Drees in the face, young Bob Myrick. Myrick came on in the sixth inning and retired the side in order, striking out Gary Nolan to end the inning. All right, the pitch to Rose, he takes a strike. Woody Fryman throwing down in the Cincinnati bullpen, and we might see Woody in the top of the eighth inning. Eric delivers, ground ball up the middle. Randall diving stop. He's up going, not time. And a fine play by Lenny Randall. Off to his right, he dove for the ball, was able to make the play, got up and threw, but feet beating his throw. So an excellent defensive play by the New York second baseman, Lenny Randall. And he's looking at that right hand. And might have jammed a finger possibly, but a fine play by Lenny Randall. A base hit for Pete Rose. That is the first off, Myrick, and the seventh in the game for the Reds. That'll bring Ken Griffey to the plate. Kenny has been on all three times up. He's had two hits and a walk. He's driven in a run and scored two. All right, the stretch and the pitch. That misses low and outside the ball. Bob Myrick, a left-hander, relief of Tom Seaver. Tom working five innings tonight, allowing six hits, striking out three, walking two, five runs, four of them earned, one wild pitch. Myrick, the throw over to first base, Rose steps back. Woody Fryman throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. The stretch. And the pitch. Griffey takes a strike. One and one. Throws off the bag at first. Myrick to the belt. He delivers. It swung on and hit the left field. John Milner moving back and toward the left field foul line. He's there and makes the play. Rose tags on his way to second, and he's there sliding. Pete Rose, seeing that Milner had an easy play, went back to the bag, tagged, and goes into second easily. Right now, we'll pause for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. The best in baseball from WMNI-FM, Columbus, Ohio. And always the very best in music on 50,000-watt Quad 100, the music leader in Central Ohio. All right, here's Dan Dreesen with Rose at second base, one away. Reds leading 5-2, seventh inning. Bob Myrick. The left-hander delivers, and Dreesen takes a breaking ball low. The pitch on the way. Dreesen swings on it and pops it into shallow left. Phillips going out, and Mike calling for it, backpedaling, and he has it for out number two. Well, two away, Rose holding at second base. And George Foster steps in. George, one for three, doubled back in the first inning to drive in our second run. Line to third in the, or to first in the third inning, a little soft liner breaking his bat, and then a fly ball to center field in the fifth inning. Goes off the bag at second. Myrick sets and delivers inside a ball. Dodgers leading six to nothing over the Pirates at Three Rivers in Pittsburgh. Sixth inning. Foster away from the plate. Now steps back in. Bob Apodaca heading to the New York bullpen to start throwing. Their pitcher slated to hit fourth in the eighth inning. The stretch. And the 1-0 pitch. High and inside. Two balls, no strikes. And now Ron Hodge is the catcher. Tells Myrick to get up on top.
Larry going one. This is tenth appearance of the year at 3.45 earned run average. Make a 3.60 earned run average. 15 innings, 15 hits. He's 2-0 and with Foster. Rose at second. The pitch on the way. That's again inside. Three balls, no strikes. Bench on deck. Hot field straight away for George. And let's see if he has the green light here with two out and count three and oh. Marks the stretch, the pitch. Foster takes low and inside, ball four. Well, George moves on to first base. Two out. That'll bring Bench to the plate. John, an RBI single his last time up. He's one for three. Popped out to Cream Pool in the first inning, struck out in the fourth, and then he singled him up to score Griffey in the fifth inning. 5 2, Reds leading it. Now they asked Jerry Crawford, the second base umpire, to move one way or the other, and Jerry moves to his left toward first base. All right, Myrick sets and delivers bench, swings and lines it foul into the seats along the left field line. Rose second base, Foster at first. Mets have out hit the Reds eight to seven. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Pitch up and in to John. 0 and 2. Mike has his sign, his 0-2 delivery. On the inside corner with a slider, called strike three. Myrick gets his second strikeout, and the Reds in the inning, no runs, a hit, no errors, two runners left on base, and at the end of seven, the Reds five, the Mets two. Imagine this. You're standing in front of a house built from only new sash windows and one new sash door. Now let's go inside and experience new sash quiet. The new sash quiet came from the perfect custom fit and the exclusive thermo pane with its half-inch dead air space. Reducing outside noise is only part of the new sash story. Eliminating the draft of freezing winter wind or the boiling summer air. The outside stays out because of the perfect new sash fit. For you, this means lower fuel bills, up to 30% lower. It makes dollars and cents to replace your worn-out windows. Replace them with New Sash, the original replacement window. For more information, call New Sash Collect, area 614-267-8396. That's 267-8396. Your New Sash windows also chill in for easy cleaning and for enjoying the fresh spring and fall air. Well, the totals through seven innings show New York with two runs, eight hits, and two errors. The Reds, five runs, seven hits, no errors. We have a new pitcher on the mound for the Reds to tell you about him. Here's Marty. Okay, Joe, the new pitcher is left-hander Woody Fryman. Fryman coming on after Gary Nolan turns in seven good innings. For Woody, it'll be his ninth appearance of the year and his second out of the Cincinnati bullpen. He shows a record of 2-4 and four with a 6.39 earned run average. And for the New York Mets to kick off the eighth inning, it's going to be Lee Mazzilli, Ron Hodges, and then shortstop Mike Phillips. Pedro Bourbon throwing down in the Reds' bullpen as Fryman prepares to go to work. He sends in the first pitch to Mazzilli and it's cut on and missed. The youngster, Mazzilli, going after a high fastball. Did not get it. Strike one. I'll give you Nolan's pitching line in just a moment. Foul ball, straight back. Jerry working seven innings. The Mets scored two runs off of him on eight hits. One of them a home run by Cranepool. He struck out nine tonight. Walked only two and was really effective when the Mets tried to threaten on him. 
Striking out Milner and Kingman to leave two on in the fifth inning. Stranded a runner in the sixth and stranded two in the seventh. Pitch inside, one and two. So Nolan appears to be in line to win his third game of the year. Fryman can do a number on him the rest of the way. He deals to Mazzilli, and he checks his swing in time. As the pitch stays low, it's two balls and two strikes. Kick in the pitch. Ground ball. Rose comes up with it and throws him out at first base. He has played an outstanding third base tonight. Catcher Hodges with one out. Well, we got to get a pinch hitter for Ron Hodges. John Stearns, who we pointed out earlier tonight as being normally the regular catcher for the match. He's a right-handed batter. Coming on now to face the left-hander Woody Fryman. One out, New York eighth inning. They trail the Reds by three as Fryman sends in a taken strike one. Stearns carries a 271 batting average. He's driven in 10 runs, has hit three home runs. Here's a high pop in the shallow center going back as Flynn coming in. Geronimo, the Chief, will play it and does for the second out. So John Stearns an out victim on a fly ball to shallow center. And the batter will be Leo Foster. Foster batting for Phillips. So Joe Frazier going deep into his bench tonight. He sent up back-to-back six-inning pinch hitters, Phillips and Beauclair. And now doing it here in the eighth with Stearns and this man, Foster. Swing, fly ball, center field. Geronimo going back, slowing to a trot and puts it away. Mets are out quickly in the eighth. Three up, three down. After seven and a half, the Reds over New York, five to two. Remember how hot and sticky last summer was? Probably said, next year we're getting central air conditioning. Well, it's about time for another hot, sticky summer. Unless you call Crawford Nichols Heating and Cooling at 876-1234. Right now is the time to buy the right Lennox Central Air Conditioning for your home. And you'll be ready for those miserable, hot summer days with cool, quiet, dependable Lennox Comfort. You'll be surprised to see how easy and inexpensive it is to add an air conditioning unit to your present warm air heating system, be it gas, oil, or electric. Lennox is the name to buy. 80 years of quality and dependability. Remember, if you have any questions on electric heat, heat pumps, humidifiers, or electric air cleaners, give Crawford Nichols a call at 876-1234. There's a Lennox solution for your total indoor comfort. Crawford Nichols, heating and cooling. Call 876-1234. Well, if you're going to be at Riverfront this weekend, be sure to include a stop at the Reds 5 and a gift shop to check out all the exciting gift items available. One souvenir you're sure to want is the 76 Highlights Record Album, which brings to life all the exciting moments of the Reds World Championship season. The album is available at the Reds 5 and a gift shop, Swallen Stores in Cincinnati and Columbus, and at Reichs and Dayton. Here's that order by mail. Send $4.98 plus a dollar postage and handling to Reds Record, Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati. More changes as the home eighth inning gets set to go with the New York Mets. New catcher, John Stearns, and the new shortstop is Leo Foster. Greenpool still at first, Randall second, Grody at third. Milner, Mazzilli, Kingman left, center, and right. The pitch to Geronimo starting it off as low a ball from the left-hander Myrick. Geronimo has struck out twice and bounced out. He's 0 for 3. Pitch on the outside, a call strike. Reds 5, New York 2. Geronimo slaps one slowly toward third. Here's Grody up in his throw with plenty of mustard on it. Took Greenpool off the bag, and Geronimo is safe. Brody came charging in, fielded the two-hopper near the line, but his throw had Cranepool off the bag. Geronimo getting credit for an infield base hit.
That'll bring up Dave Concepcion, who is single in three trips. The other two times, he's bounced out to shortstop. This reminds you to find out all the special bonuses extended to groups of 30 or more. Call the right, the Reds group sales office here at the stadium. Lead off infield hit by Geronimo, so the hit totals are even for the two clubs at eight. New York's infield defensively now looking for the double play ball as Concepcion looks at a strike away at the knees. Raleigh Eastwick will start to get ready. Pitch taken high, a ball, one and one. Uh. Myrick looking into the new catcher Stearns. A 1-1 count. Davey stepping away. Concepcion taking his good time standing back in. Myrick stretches and will work to first base. Geronimo back. Inning number six in Houston as the Astros leading the Phillies two to nothing. Check swing, it's high, two and one. That's Steve Carlton for Philadelphia. James Rodney Richard throwing for the Astros. Glenn watching the action from the on-deck circle. He'll be next up. Geronimo running. Davey swings. Gets one into center field. That's a base hit. Geronimo had slowed up at second, but now will come on easily into third. Runners on the corners with nobody out. On back-to-back eighth-inning singles, Geronimo's of the infield variety with him running. Davey singles into center. Now it's Doug Flynn who, with the Reds hitting and running in the fourth inning, drove Concepcion in from first base with a single along the right field line. The Reds leading by three runs with a chance to get some more. They've got a foot in the door here in round number eight. Right-handed batting Flynn against left-handed pitching Bob Myrick. There goes Concepcion. Here's a fly ball hit to right. Kingman going back as Davey comes back to first. The catch is made. Geronimo tags and scores our sixth run. We lead 6-2. to two. Boy, I'll tell you, filling in for Joe Morgan, Doug Flynn has certainly done his job tonight. Two RBIs to his credit. One out, and Woody Fryman will step in. Woody Bunch, first base side. Good bunt. Myrick throwing to first. Greenpool is there. Sacrificed by the Reds pitcher to get Davey on to second base, and you can score it. One to three. Now Pete Rose, who has gone one for three in the game, he scored a couple of runs, was out in the seventh inning through an infield hit. And that base hit by Rose extended his hitting streak. Pete now is hit in six consecutive games. Run is home. Two men are out. David is at second. Here's a pitch to Rose. Swung on and grounded foul off third. Rose now is only six hits away from tying George Sisler for 27th place on the all-time hit list. Been a good night for the Reds and for Reds fans. We've got approximately 8,500 junior and senior high school straight-A students and their guests on hand. And they've had a whole lot to cheer about as the Reds lead now the Mets by four runs. Pitch up from Myrick to Rose, a ball and one strike. Bob Apodaca and Raleigh Eastwick 
Relievers loosening up, meaning that both bullpens are busy here in the eighth inning. Here's Randall going towards second. Myrick wheels as if to throw that way, but hangs on to the ball. New York's ninth inning will see the likes of a pinch hitter for the pitcher Myrick, then Lenny Randall, then Jerry Grody. Nothing like picking up an insurance runner too late in the game. The Reds have already gotten one home in this inning, and maybe another one if Rose can get a base hit. It's a high fly ball down the right field line. Here's Kingman moving over. He's under, and whoops, had to come back to his right to make the catch. The eighth inning numbers, one run, two hits, no errors with a man stranded. We move to the ninth, where the Reds lead the Mets 6-2. to two. in this series opener with three more games yet to be played tomorrow at 5.30. Doubleheader, the first of the year, Sunday afternoon, beginning at 1.15. Woody Fryman, after Gary Nolan went the first seven, is now working in his second inning. As he looks in to get the sign and the first ninth inning pitches on the way to another New York pinch hitter. In this case, it is Mike Vale. The pitch is swung on and fouled back into the seats behind the Reds' dugout. I'll tell you one thing, you got to give Joe Frazier an A for effort. He's run him up there tonight, utilizing a bunch of people off that Mets bench. Bale, a right-handed batter, hitting 325. He swings and he misses on Fryman's fastball, strike two. 325 batting average with a home run and six RBIs. This one gets away from Fryman and sails all the way back to the screen. Johnny Bench picking it up. Flipping to the plate umpire, Paul Pryor, and he throws it out of play. One and two, the count on Vail with Randall due up next. Just off the outside edge to level the count. 37,364 here tonight. 37,364. Now the 2-2 pitch. This one fouls straight back. Raleigh Eastwick continues to stay ready in the Cincinnati bullpen in the event his services might be needed. Prime and throwing well, however. He knocked him off in order in the eighth. The big wind up in the pitch. Up and in, full count. giving Vale a lot of room in left center. And he fouls it off the right field side and out of play. The nine strikeouts tonight by Gary Nolan, the most he has fanned since June 8, 1971, when he punched out 10 Houston batters. Nolan really had it working for him tonight. As Joe mentioned, was throwing extremely hard, and the strikeout totals certainly reflect that. Ground ball back to the mound. Fryman has it. And on the throw to Dries, and Vail becomes out number one. Woody has set down four in a row and will be going to work on the top of the New York batting order as 
second baseman Lenny Randall steps in. He has struck out, single, walked, and struck out again. Randall shoots one into right field. That's a base hit. Griffey running toward the line. Backhands the ball. Randall takes a turn as Griffey comes back to the infield with the throw. So Lenny Randall continues to swing a hot bat for New York. As he comes up with a wrong field ninth inning single. Now Jerry Grody, who is single, bounced out, single and walked. He's two for three. Infield, a double play depth. The outfield for the right-handed batting. Grody playing straight away. Randall with the lead. Fryman checks him, and Grody looks at the strike. Bench hanging a sign. Pitch. That's foul back. No balls, two strikes on third baseman Jerry Grody. Grody was saying before the game, he, of course, has had back trouble and at times serious back trouble the last couple of years. Right now, flexing his back as he bends at the waist, but saying playing third base and with a stance you take there in relationship to the one you take behind the plate, it gives him very little, if any, problem at all as far as his back is concerned. He hammers one back into left field. Foster goes back on the ball, draws a beat, and makes the catch. Just a reminder, Red baseball comes your way all season long on WCHS in Charleston, West Virginia, WMOA in Marietta, Ohio, and WKSD in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. We're two out deep into the New York Met ninth inning. Lenny Randall at first. Here's John Milner, who is one for four. Seventh inning, single to right. Strike is called. Ground ball to the box. Fryman on to Dreesen. And this one belongs to the ref. In the ninth inning, New York with no runs on a hit. They leave a runner on as the Reds put away the first of this four-game series against the New York Mets. Final score, Red 6, New York 2. Whoops.